As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. You know, one of the most common reactions that can happen when you're on the backside of a relationship with a narcissistic individual is that you can have a lot of that coulda, woulda, shoulda game. You know, the regrets that there were certain, certain signs that were there that you just kind of let pass and you didn't really do a whole lot about. Narcissists can be skilled at times in the way that they disguise their selfishness or their manipulations or their exploitations, but over time, certain trends, certain tendencies and patterns begin to creep out. They just can't hold it in forever. And many times when you're way down the road, uh, past the earlier stages, you realize that there were some signs that you saw, but you didn't necessarily act upon until you were pulled in with a lot of hurt. Let me give you some illustrations. I've, I've jotted down some, uh, some real life illustrations of what people have said about their experiences with this. For example, one person says, my boyfriend used to make rude chauvinistic comments. And then he'd say, I'm just kidding. Once we got married, I found out he wasn't kidding. He sees women as servants. And by the time we divorced, I just hated him. I wish I had listened to myself before saying I do. Another person says I was constantly wanting, uh, my, my friend, excuse me, was constantly wanting to talk with me about guy problems. Uh, they always treated her dirty. She had a history of bad boyfriends and painted herself out as the sweet and innocent victim. After I learned that she'd recently cut off an eight month affair with a married guy from work, I realized she was the real manipulator. Another person says, my father was the most critical man ever. He could never be pleased. If you called him out, he'd rage. Everyone else was afraid of him, but I didn't take his crap and then I'd yell right back at him. But then this person goes on and says, but I don't like the kind of person that I wound up being when I was with him. It dawned on me that I was just wasting my breath why did I get sucked into so many useless arguments with a full-blown jerk? I could give you more illustrations, but I think you kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about. Narcissists cannot stop themselves from being narcissistic. And over time, they are going to show their colors. And many times people will say, ah, uh, I wish I had been more firm. I wish I had been more uh, committed to my own uh, well-being earlier on. And so here's where I'm going to let you know there's one key for you. If you're in a recovery process to, uh, uh, in a recovery process in the aftermath of being with a narcissist. And that key for your recovery is simply this. You need to learn to listen to yourself. So many times that little voice is already up there in your mind. It's saying, be careful. This doesn't look right, but you just kind of blow on by. When you see that something's a bit off, when you notice cer certain characteristics or tendencies that you're just not comfortable with, pay attention and don't blow by that. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go through multiple red flags that narcissists are quite inclined towards uh, waving in front of you. And the more you're able to see what some of their most common red flags are, I'm hoping that you'll take this uh, this key uh, notion and say, I need to listen to myself, I need to pay attention, and then we can do something from today forward so that you don't get yourself inside some of the same traps that you've been. For example, one of the biggest red flags is this. There, are, there might be times as you're uh, talking seemingly in a personal uh, level with a narcissist when they seem to give you personal disclosures but over time you realize, no, all they're doing is griping. Narcissists are chronic critics. And uh, whenever they disclose things about themselves, you'll notice that no particular insight or no particular healing intention is attached to those disclosures. That's a huge red flag. Another red flag for you to be aware of. 
And that is, the, speaking of being critical, the narcissist may not initially criticize you, but they find fault with lots of other people and situations. And when you see that happening, I'm hoping you realize, you know, that's not a comfortable characteristic for you to have to put up with. And guess what? As you become more familiar to that person, you're going to be next that's going to be on that. Listen to what that says. Another red flag is... There are times when that narcissist may seem a little extra friendly or willing, or maybe they smile a lot, they do a lot of favors, but then many times you realize uh, there's hooks on the backside of that and there's kind of a you owe me mentality. Much of their friendliness can actually be subtle indicators of their need to be in control. That's part of that charming element that they bring to the equation. There's an exploitation that goes along with it. Be aware of that. Likewise, when you're watching with individuals, you'll notice that people with a narcissistic bent tend to be, uh, be poor listeners. They can interrupt too quickly or easily. They may forget what you've said very uh, uh, recently. Uh, they may make too many me too comments and, and that's not always bad, but what I mean is you may say something and say, yeah, that happened to me. And then they take off and they hijack the conversation and leave you behind. They're not good listeners. Pay attention to what that might imply because it's going to keep coming out. Likewise, whenever you're dealing with a narcissist, you realize one huge thing, and that is the problems that they experience are never their fault. <laughs> For example, if they were reprimanded at work, or if they had arguments with their family, or if they had money problems, it's always someone else's fault, or it's, it's you know bad circumstances. You know, Here and there, yeah, you can say that that's uh, the case, but uh, no, they, they want to think of themselves as too special to be problematic. So if there are problems, then those folks over there, these events over here had to cause it. Uh, they don't take responsibility for things when, when it goes wrong. Another red flag for you to watch for, and that is these individuals over time proved to be quite thin skinned. If somebody suggests that there was something wrong or it could have been handled differently, they can be quite defensive. Uh, they're not coachable. They don't take input very well. It's like, who, who, who needs to tell me what to do? I already know everything I need to know. That's a bad sign. Pay attention to that one. Another red flag for you to watch for is that person who constantly gives unsolicited advice. Well, maybe you should try this, uh, or uh, maybe you should have uh, said this instead. And you'll notice that as you talk with them, they can give you all sorts of encouragement. But uh, when you're only receiving end of it, particularly for a while, it's like, no, this doesn't feel like encouragement. This is more of that criticism that we're talking about. Unsolicited advice equals criticism. When you, when you uh, see it and you start feeling comfortable, uncomfortable with it, pay attention to what that is. Also, uh, you'll notice that uh, narcissists often have kind of a, what have you done for me lately? Uh, kind of a mentality. They, they like being uh, given the, the favored position. They like being uh, regaled as the one who's really special. And so they want to be serviced. They want to be taken care of. Uh, if they do, do something good for you, they want you to do things uh, back towards them, uh, double over. There, there tends to be a little bit too much of a, uh, come on, give me a little bit more. And then a little bit more after that, you know, put a little bit more of that on my plate, so to speak. In addition, there are other red flags. For example, they can have extremes in time management. They may be super rigid in the way they manage time, or they may be super loose uh, to the point to where they, they're so predictably unpredictable, and it illustrates they don't really care about you. And then also, over time, another red flag that you'll pick up on is they tend to be very... Um, uh, not all that consistent with their anger. And by that, I mean, there can be an undertow of irritability and annoyance. And you're, you notice that, uh, there's, uh, some frustration that they tend to sit on. And when you ask them to explain it, that they just, nah, I don't need to talk about it. Pay attention. When you see these red flags, when you notice that there are patterns and trends, rather than thinking they may be having a bad day or not, don't we all have something? And there's, there's room for, you know, a certain amount of grace there. But when you see it over and over, um, listen to yourself. If there's a, a discomfort in your gut, ask yourself, why am I feeling this? What kinds of evidences am I picking up on? And uh, let's keep in mind that with the narcissist, 
There always, there's always something cooking on, uh, cooking beneath the surface, and it's going to be incumbent upon you to pay attention to what that might imply. There are just certain truths that you need to uh, to remind yourself with, uh, with respect to the narcissist, and and I know this is not what you want, but let's just be honest about who these people are. Narcissists are all about winning. Narcissists want you to defer to them, and they feel like it's your obligation to do so. Narcissists care about you only to the extent that you prove pr uh, useful to them. Narcissists are users and you're that pawn that should be used. If you show insight, if you are a, uh, uh, an introspective uh, kind of a person, narcissists typically will discount that. But you know that insight and the intuition that you may have is, uh, uh, with it is there for a reason. Don't discount yourself. And likewise, when you practice self-care, they tend not to like that. But you know what? Self-care is a good thing. And you're not selfish like they may tell you. Practice self-care too. If you confront or set boundaries in healthy relationships, we, uh, we make room for that. Uh, narcissists are threatened when you stand up in confidence for yourself. Be confident and stand up for yourself anyway. Pay attention to that. If you align yourself with good and honest and decent people who have healthy skills, the narcissist may tell you they're not good for you. Stick around with those healthy people anyway. The narcissist may like your yes and dislike your no, but you know what? You, you need to uh, stand your ground by saying yes to yourself whenever it's necessary. Narcissists will start giving these signals. They'll, they'll throw the red flags at you. And I know that you may have history, a history with them in the past of overlooking it. But as you see that, I'm hoping that there can be a, um, kind of a war weary kind of a mindset that says, you know, I'm going to do a lot better job this day forward, uh, listening to who I am and listening to what my gut and my intuition tells me. I've got to practice self care. And when the narcissist says, well, you're just being selfish, A, that's not my problem to solve if they don't like it. B, I'm still going to listen to myself. And I hope that videos such as this can give you some good food for thought, and, and I hope that you can learn and grow as you understand this phenomenon that we call narcissism. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so, and we're going to keep more videos coming at you. And hit that like button, too, because uh, that helps us in the algorithm section. Uh, Gus and I will keep more videos coming. And I, I know there are times when uh, you might have a need to unpack these kinds of issues with a licensed professional therapist. And if that's the case, we're sponsored by the people at BetterHelp.com. There's a link below. They have a whole team of licensed professional therapists that can assist you. And, and so if that's the need that you would have, I would encourage you to go through the link and seek out the help that you would deserve. <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, you're not being selfish like the narcissist may say that you are. Likewise, I already I also have my courses. They're like uh, online classes that you can sign up for. It would require a lot of work. Each class has multiple videos with teaching documents along with it and, and uh, guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making good connection skills. This is me. Free to be about boundaries and finding yourself. Uh, despite the controllers, we also have my webinars. And uh, even after they've been presented, they're available for you. So we have lots of resources, my books, my podcasts, and plenty of other things. Avail yourself to all of that. I know that there are times when you can say, well, I was burned and I could have, should have, would have done things differently. Well, once you're able to see the red flags, and then once you commit to listening to yourself and paying attention to what those red flags say, then I'm hoping it's going to position you to be a person of much greater stability and steadiness because ultimately you deserve to be a person of peace. I hope you can find your peace.